Uh, my name is Andy. Uh, Alex and Ashley said, uh, you know, we believe every Sunday is somebody's first Sunday. So um, if I've never met you, my name is Andy. It's so great to meet you. It's an honor and privilege to get an opportunity to uh, share with you this morning. Thank you so much for listening. I believe I have nothing to say, but God has everything to say. And um, I just, I tell people when I meet with them, you know, God once spoke through a donkey, so I hope I'm just on donkey level. I hope, you know, I hope I'm at least donkey level today. So uh, if you take anything, it is, it is not me, it is him. So uh, this message, just to be real candid right up front, has been really difficult for me. I uh, was way late. Our production team, they're amazing. I turned stuff in really late, uh, really battled over pulling this together. So to let you know a little insight on me, uh, when Pastor Sean asks me to speak and tells me that I'm speaking and that the series is called Come Home for Christmas, the way I'm wired, the way I'm geared, I immediately then pray and beg God to show me something, to give me something, so that when I'm finished, you leave going, ah, oh, that's why they called it that. That's why it's called Come Home for Christmas. And I couldn't find that. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. I searched. I tried. I thought about ideas. I threw out tons of stuff I won't share because maybe I'll preach those some other time, but I just couldn't find it. And then last week, I heard Mac speak, and then I also knew what was coming here in the next couple weeks, and I was like, because ah. when I found out and read what I thought I was supposed to share, I was like, oh, this is a setup. It's a series. It's a setup. You know, and I think that last week's going to build on this week, and then these two weeks will build on next week, and then everything is actually culminating to 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and 7 o'clock on Christmas Eve when we'll all join together, and I think that is where God is going to drop what it means to come home for Christmas. So I'm real excited. Don't miss it. 3, 5, and 7 Christmas Eve. Invite everybody. Free plug, free commercial, but... Not for the commercial sake, but I really think that's what God was showing me when I realized what I was supposed to teach. I was like, this is what God's doing. I'm not supposed to reveal it yet. Not my job. All right. So I want to jump in. The title of today's message is, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up for this. All right. And let me explain this a little bit and let me give a, a disclaimer. The, I'm going to pick on my wife a little bit, and uh, the views expressed right now have been given thorough permission to express, okay? So, and if you know my wife and you know me, you know uh, she's way better than me, so I'm barely scratching the surface and I'm picking on her. She's still light years better than me, so I'm going to pick on her a little bit. So, I didn't sign up for this. kind of plays out in our lives in a way that I want to reference, and then I want to tell you a little bit. So, some, about every couple months or few months, roughly... Uh, six months, eight months, I'm getting told no, um, not that often. It is. Um, I will be doing bills. I will be doing the budget. I will be looking through things. I'll be looking through um, Angie's credit card statement, and I will find sometimes something. I'll be like, hey, what's this? What is this? And she will be like, I don't know. I didn't sign up for this. And I'm like, oh, well, for, fraud alert, fraud alert. We've been scammed. We've been hacked. We've been, oh, man, I got to figure it out. How long have we been paying for said bill? And I'll look back. I'm like, well, you didn't sign up for it, but we've been paying for it for seven months. And then it will send her on a mission to find and explore and look and figure out what this charge is. Only to almost every time, every time, go, I did sign up for this. <laughs> I did. Oh, that's that such and such that I sh thought I was going to cancel, but I didn't cancel. And I didn't remember that I had to take the 30-day trial and then cancel it or I would be charged this. Anybody ever been there? Anybody? Anybody? Yeah, fellow strugglers here. We're okay. We're okay. Don't raise your wife's hand. That's all that. That's all that. <laughs> um, so, so that is real. I mean, there are moments in life where we look and go, I don't think I signed up for this. And, you know, we might have been hacked, scammed, something like that. But there are also moments in life where we kind of have that feeling. We have that sense let me explain. We think, let's get a puppy. Yes, they are so cute. They are so adorable. Honey, let's get a puppy. Only to come home 
and your furniture is shredded. Or you find yourself within a few days with plastic wrapped around your hand in an inverted bag, reaching down to the ground and going, who owns who now? And they call this man's best friend, but I don't need any friends this bad. <laughs> and you think, I didn't sign up for this. Or you get that job. Oh, you wanted that job. That's a dream job. Oh, man, that's a great job. Only to quickly go, man, if they would just let me do my job, if I could just do my job and I'd have to go to these meetings and I'd have to go to this and I'd have to do this extra stuff, man, this job would be great if I could actually do my job because I didn't sign up for this. It's kind of catching on. Or my wife's one she gave me. I think she's getting me back, but I don't know. She might not be talking about me here. She says, you meet the guy. You marry the guy. You love the guy. You're in love with the guy. Only to find out that the guy can get his laundry really close to the dirty clothes, but his socks and underwear make it really close, but they never make it right into the dirty clothes, and you're like, I didn't sign up for this. Or you're a teenager, and you're like, oh, man, I cannot wait to drive. I cannot wait. I can't wait to get that license. I cannot wait to be able to have my own car, my independence, until you go to the gas station <laughs> to fill up that car. And you see how much it costs to drive that car. And you think, I didn't sign up for this. I think you get my point. We've all been there. We've all felt that. We've been in some situation. Whether we've said it or not, we may not. But it may, and I think, has been a thought that we have had. Or now, if you're going to remember it every time you do have it. And the Christmas story has two characters that I want us to look at today that didn't say it, but man, they were given a huge opportunity to say it, and they might have thought it, but we know they didn't say it, and I think there's a lot we can learn from, so let's pray, and we'll jump in. God, thank you so much for what you're going to show us through Joseph and Mary this morning, and how it's going to impact our lives, and I pray that we're willing and open to listen and apply whatever you show in us, and that we leave better than we walked in. I ask this in your name. Amen. We're going to look at Joseph and Mary. And uh, we find Joseph, uh, the section I'm going to talk about in uh, Matthew chapter 1. Now, a little context for you that I think will help you is a lot of people believe when we are reading about the stuff that Joseph and Mary are finding out and learning today, that they were roughly between the ages of like 13 to 18. Okay? So I think it will help you and I to properly process this if we find our 14, 15 year old self and think about hearing this news as a 14 year old. I think you'll be deeply convicted by that because <laughs> I don't know if you're me, but sometimes I don't handle this well at my current age, much less there's no chance the 14 year old me would have dealt with this really well. So I think that's some context that I think will help us. Matthew 1, starting at verse 18, it says, this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. So this is important. It was pledged to be married. That's kind of like engagement, but culturally it's still different, all right? So if you think about his engagement, yeah, you're close, but culturally this was like you're almost married, close enough to married, but you're not doing married things yet, if you, get, you, get, you know what I mean. And so, but to break it off at this stage, if you were pledged to be married, to break it off at this stage would require the similar process of like a divorce procedure. So it's not like, oh, you know, we fell out of love. It's, you know, good thing we didn't get married. No, it's a big deal to break this off. So she's pledged to be married to Joseph. And Joseph... Um, is here, and so it says his mo um, his mother Mary was pledged to be ma uh, married to Joseph. But before they came together, uh, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Verse nineteen: Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law 
and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Things we can see here about Joseph is that he was clearly a young man of great integrity and character. It tells us he was faithful to the law, and we also see that at this moment, he could have been done with her. He could have been done with her. In fact, it tells us that he planned to be done with her. He planned to divorce her quietly. He planned to move on quietly. His character and integrity would not allow him to do what he could have done, which was stone her and have her very disgracefully shamed because no one believed this Holy Spirit baby thing. And so that's what he could have done. No one would have thought different about him. No one would have thought uh, less of him. In fact, he probably would have received more support from his family and friends because he left her than he probably received staying with her. And so that's what we can see is we can see that he's definitely a man of character and integrity. And when you and I face moments in life where we are faced with a situation that makes us go, I don't know, I, don't, I didn't sign up for this. I'm out, I'm gone. It will take great character and great integrity, and that will definitely factor into how we respond and how we handle those situations in life. Now, Mary, we find her situation in Luke, in Luke chapter 1. Some context for you for that. Once again, think about the age. Think about being 14 and hearing what you're about to hear. Also, the Gospels have a lot of stories, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that are very similar, and some of them are almost identical in detail, the stories that are told. It's interesting to me that the birth of Jesus is not one of those things. You would think that the birth of Jesus being written about in the Gospel be, would be something that would be very thoroughly discussed in each of the Gospels, but it's not. It's mainly in Luke. Luke's the one that has the main, but I think that's on purpose. I think, you know, God's not going, oh, I just figured this out. No, that he had a plan, you know. And so Luke was a doctor, all right? And so a few things we know about Luke is that he was very detailed and he was a physician. So if anybody's writing about a lady getting pregnant without doing married things yet to her pledged husband, Luke is going to be one of the gospel writers more than anyone that has an issue with that that wants to explore the validity of that, that's gonna be concerned about how that's possible. All right, so I think it's, that's very key. Also, we know that when studying that Luke was very thorough. In fact, a lot of his gospel is written through basically oral interpretation of him actually meeting with the people he's talking about and taking a account of what they're sharing. So he's writing this not because grandpa told grandpa told grandpa, passed it down, generation, generation, stories passed down. He's telling this because he went, hey, Mary, how did it happen? Tell me about it. I'm thoroughly engaged. I want to know. Angel came and said, what? What did you do? What were you feeling? What were you thinking? And so I think that context is really important when we read that. And I think it's something that should embolden our faith. It should be something that really stokes our faith about the validity of our story here. So Luke 1, starting in verse 26, it says, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, this is key and it'll come back here in a minute, God sent an, the angel Gabriel to Nazareth to a town in Galilee. Verse 27, To a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David, the virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Verse 29. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. So Mary's like, uh-uh, uh-uh. This isn't good. This isn't good. Angel's here meeting with me, telling me something from God. Um, this is going to be bad. This is going to be bad news. This is going to be bad news. In fact, uh, I'm 14, and I might be clocking out today. Angel's showing up. I might be done. It's been a good run, but man, this is not good. Angel's showing up. Scary. Bad. Not going to be good, all right? So that's what she's feeling. That's what she's thinking. She's very afraid. She's very worried. 
angel says, but the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Verse 31, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call, you are to call him Jesus. All right, so if I'm Mary at this point, I'm probably thinking, Phew. all right, I'm good, I'm good. I thought it was gonna be bad news. I thought it was gonna be an issue, but you know what? The angel's got the wrong Mary. She's got the wrong Mary, because I ain't done Mary things that you can have one of those babies. So, so he's, the angel's here telling me, angel's here telling me I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a baby? Whew, I thought it was gonna be bad. I'm about to clear this up, I'm about to clear the confusion, because I'm about to tell Gabriel, hey, wrong Mary, <laughs> wrong Mary. Some other Mary is gonna get some bad news today, because it ain't this Mary, because this Mary ain't having no baby. Ain't no way this Mary's having a baby. So if I'm Mary, I'm thinking, whew, I thought it was gonna be bad. Uh, it's just angel found the wrong house. Angel found the wrong place. All right. I don't know if that went that way, but if I were Mary, that's how that would have went. <laughs> Verse 32. He will be great and will be called son of the most high, the Lord God. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary says, verse 34. <laughs> Mary's like, what? No, no, no. Wrong Mary. Hey, wrong Mary. How will this be? This is not possible. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the, of the Most High um, will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Verse 36, even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, which is why that was important. Verse 37, for no word from God will ever fail. Things we see here about Mary is riddled with fear, riddled with confusion, scared to death, hoping that maybe there's another Mary around. You and I, when we face moments in life that make us want to go, oh, I didn't sign up for this. It should not shock us that it will come in moments that are fearful and very confusing. The moments where you and I are tempted to go, I didn't sign up for this, are not going to be moments where you're like, great, <laughs> so glad it's going this way, <laughs> so happy. So happy, I'm scared to death and confused. Awesome. Love you, God. <laughs> this is amazing. No, these moments are more like Mary read them. Uh, this is impossible. How is this going to work? This is impossible, God. There is no chance. These situations are more like, why? <laughs> why me? No, not me. Another Mary. Not me, why? Why? I don't know how this is, no, why? These moments are also like, how? How? How is this possible? I'm a virgin. How is it? How, I, I don't get what you're saying. It's impossible. I don't know why. And I clearly really don't know how. These are the moments. But they shouldn't shock us. They shouldn't surprise us. If they have before, they shouldn't now going forward. Because they very much did for Joseph and Mary. But once again, 14, 13, 16, somewhere in there, Joseph and Mary. And we know because of what we're currently in the season of celebrating and will for the next few weeks celebrating, celebrate that they didn't find themselves at a place where they said, I didn't sign up for this, I'm out. Find another Mary. Mary, find another Joseph, I'm out. They didn't say that. So, so what helped them? What helped them? And how were they able to respond however they responded? This is what's fascinated me. This is what's challenged the heck out of me this week. And this is what's helped me the most. And so I want it to help you as well. And so I want us to spend the rest of our time looking at that. Look at what helped them and how they responded. What helped them and how they responded. Because I think in there is where we find what we need today. So let's start with what helped them. What helped them is the first they heard from God. They both heard from God. We see they both clearly heard from God. In fact, the last verse I read about Mary's account said, for no word from God 
will ever fail. No word from God will ever fail. Some translations translate this verse and say, nothing is impossible with God. All right, nothing is impossible with God. And so we both know they heard from God and they were in that place of hearing from God, which leads me to assume that if they're hearing from God, they number one, had a relationship with God, and number two, were walking closely enough with God to hear him. This is so key. Because if you and I are not in a relationship with God, there's a lot of noise and it might be difficult to hear which is clearly the voice of God and what is not. And if we're not walking closely with God, just like if you're sitting in the back row of the balcony area right now, if you're not walking closely with God and you are God and I am me, Without the microphone, you cannot hear what I'm saying. You might have heard something on the front row, but if I'm not close with God, I cannot hear God. So we know that they heard from God. They both got angel delivery service through a dream or through in person to hear the voice of God, to hear the word of the Lord. And I think that helped. I think that helped. It scared them at first. (laughs) Freaked Mary out but it helped. The second thing that helped them is nourishment from other believers. Nourishment from other believers. I'll explain why I titled it that. There's probably a better title, but I'll explain. You'll, it'll make sense why I called it that. All right, so nourishment for other believers. Let's look at Luke 1, 39 through 40. Luke 1, 39 through 40 is picking up where I kind of stopped. It says, at that time, at what time? At the time the angel left, all right? As soon as the angel delivered the news, dropped the bomb on Mary, Uh, Mary realizing that it wasn't a different Mary. Um, This is what, at that time. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judah where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. And greet Elizabeth. All right, so some translations say Mary made haste. At that time, Mary made haste. So there's an urgency. There is a hurried mentality. There is, this angel has just departed and dropped some news on me that is, wow, This is big. This is important. But this angel has also told me that old Elizabeth, not young Elizabeth, old Elizabeth, my relative, like old Elizabeth, like shouldn't be having any babies, old Elizabeth, wanted to have babies but hadn't had any babies, is pregnant. And she's been pregnant for six months. And Mary was like, I got to get to her. I got to get to her. Why did she have to get to her? Because what did she find in Elizabeth? Elizabeth's old. Elizabeth shouldn't be having a baby, but she's been pregnant for six months. So when she shows up, she finds in Elizabeth someone that goes, yeah, nothing is impossible with God. Everything's possible with God. I'm living proof right now. In fact, Zechariah doubted it, and he hasn't talked since the day we were told we were pregnant. I'm living proof. This right here is why we push And talk about small groups so much. Because you want me to tell you what you find in small groups? Nourishment for other believers. You find someone in your small group who's been through what you're going through. You find someone in your small group who's been through what you've been through five times. You find somebody in your small group that hasn't been through what you've been through, but they're about to go through what you're going through. And you find nourishment from other believers. Get in a small group. In our small group is where you find Elizabeth. Where you find Elizabeth going, I know, it seems crazy. It seems ridiculous. I have no clue how it's going to work out. It makes no sense scientifically. But I know this. No word from God ever fails. No word God, from God ever fails. So get in a small group. Small group semester just ended. Another commercial plug for you. Go to, check, go to the website, check out small groups, and sign up. They start back in January, all right? There's a meeting next week. If you're someone sitting here going, yeah, I've been through a lot. Yeah, I could, I could be some nourishment. People could feed off me for days, all right? Next week, we have a leader meeting, all right, at 10, 10, during this service. So come to the leader meeting and get ready to be used. Get ready for God to use you and be Elizabeth in someone's life. But that's what she found. She found nourishment. And this is why I called it that. Years ago, I read this um, Oswald Chambers devotional. And um, this stuck with me. It's on my, I've got it saved on my phone. It it is rich with content. I wish I could read and had time to read the whole thing to you. But I'm just going to read the first sentence and the last. 
The title of the devotion, so you can Google it if you want to, is called Receiving Yourself in the Fire of Sorrow. Receiving Yourself in the Fire of Sor Sorrow, Oswald Chambers. It starts this way. This is the first sentence. As a saint of God, my attitude towards sorrow and difficulty should not be to ask that they be prevented, but to ask that God protect me so that I may remain what he created me to be in spite of all my fires of sorrow. The last sentence, if you will receive yourself in the fires of difficulty and sorrow, God will make you nourishment for other people. And I can tell you everything that I've ever gone through that's been extremely difficult, it has not only been amazing to see God work and speak and direct and guide and get me through it, but it's been so much more beautiful to see him use it to even help some of you that sit there today. And even though it doesn't make sense in the moment, and even though we're scared and we're confused and wondering why or how or this is impossible, it may be months or years and you're meeting with someone else and you're there, Elizabeth. And you're going, that's why. That's why. Because God will use you as nourishment for other people. And I think this is what helped them. This is what helped them. I've been watching the um, Man, in the Man in the Arena documentary about Tom Brady. I don't know if you know about it. Um, but I was watching it the other night right, at, right after I finished writing this. And... Um, there was a, I think it's the second episode, it's called Tough Times. And uh, he said, you have to put people around you that help you be the best you can be. And I realized the toughest things I've faced in life have been the best things for me. That is the great theologian Thomas Edward Patrick Brady, Jr. I told Pastor Sean, I knew if I quoted that, no matter how the message went, it would be a great message. <laughs> this is great, and uh, this is probably enough for us to chew on and take home with us, but I really want you to see how they responded. I really think this is where I knew this is what we were supposed to talk about. So let's look at their response. Joseph's response, we go back to Matthew, Matthew 1, 24, and in 1, 24, we get one verse it says, when Joseph woke up, he woke up, remember the angel came to Joseph in a dream and told him, yes, Mary is going to have a baby, and yes, she didn't cheat on you, the Holy Spirit is taking care of that, and uh, she is a virgin, and uh, take her home to be your wife. It's going to be great, and you're going to raise Jesus. Um, it says, when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. That's his response. We see he woke up and did. He woke up and did. He woke up and did what he was commanded to do. And I, we could kind of gloss over that. We'll probably just read through it really quickly. Uh, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. It doesn't seem like that. Um, it might be something we just miss until we remember that delayed obedience is still disobedience. Delayed obedience is still disobedience. So this is huge. This is huge. He didn't wait and go, okay, I had this weird dream last night. I can't believe, I can't, can't even believe I'm telling you this, but I had an angel show up and told me Mary's pregnant and it's Holy Spirit baby. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's, I don't, I'm going to have to see, I'm going to have to see, a, I'm going to have to see some proof. I'm going to have to get some tests done. We're going to have to figure out because I don't believe it. And, uh, you know, if the baby's born with a crown on his head, then I'll believe it, and then uh, I'll, 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 I'm in then. I'm in then. That's when I'll be in. No, he woke up and did. He woke up and did. He woke up and did. This isn't that big until we remember that indecision is still a decision. Indecision is still a decision. And so he didn't wake up and go, I really need to give it till lunch to see if that was what I ate last night or really an angel. says he woke up and he did. He woke up and did. I believe really today throughout our services that um, many are here today stuck or stagnant with where God is working in your life. 
because there was a moment that showed up in your life where God gave you a clear directive and you said, no, I didn't sign up for that. And it stagnated or stalled the work of God in your life. And that you're here today to change that. Because that's what it'll do. We know and are talking about them because they didn't say that. They didn't say, "Uh, I'm out. They woke up and did. They woke up and did. Joseph didn't look at it and go, man, you know, really? This looks hard. This is going to be difficult. There's just too many unknowns. Let me figure some things out. Or, man, you know what? You know what people are going to think? You know what people are going to say? You know what people are going to do? No, he woke up and did. He woke up and did. Let's look at Mary's response. Maybe she's a little less convicted. She's not, by the way. (laughs) Mary actually has two responses. She has two responses. She has a response to Elizabeth, because remember, she made haste. She hurried away. When the angel left, she hurried away to Elizabeth. And when she got there, Elizabeth was like, hey, we're pregnant. Yeah, we're going to have a baby. That's not how it was written, but that's how it went down. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. I'm, I'm not joking. You read it. Read it. When, when Mary showed up, baby jumped in Elizabeth's belly, and she knew she was pregnant and knew it was God. And it was like, I mean, I'm sure it was like, a, whoa. You're having Jesus. You're having Jesus. You know, uh, I'm, I'm guaranteeing it, it was something like that. It was probably not exactly like that, but it was something like that. They were real excited. So she shows up to Elizabeth, and Elizabeth's like, "Tell me, tell me, tell me what happened. Tell me, tell me what, tell me what went down. Tell me what this angel showed up. The angel said something. I felt it when you got here. I knew it. And you know, you're having the Lord. Uh, man, tell me, tell me, tell me." So we see her response to that, and then we see her, uh, before that, we see her uh, response to the angel when the angel told her. But I want to look at Elizabeth's response first, and then we'll close it out with the response to the angel. We're back in Luke chapter 1, verse 46. It says, And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant, For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. Let me stop right there because if we read that, we don't talk that way. So um, if we read that, we might think, man, Mary's a little, man, it's gotten her head already, you know, because, you know, if we read it this way, um, for he has looked on his humble estate and from generation to generation, they will call me blessed. You know, it kind of reads that way. It can kind of read that way. But what she's really saying here is, why me? Who am I? Who am I that that God would want me to be this person? Who I'm I'm nobody. I'm not I'm not able to be used by God this way. Who am I? And the generation's generation is a weightiness. It's a can't mess this up. People are going to talk about this. They're going to talk about this for a long time. This is heavy. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arms. He has scattered the proud in their thoughts and of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. Verse 53, he has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. Verse 54, he has helped his servant to Israel in remembrance of his mercies, mercy and he has spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to, the, to his offspring forever. Mary responds with seven he has statements here. I don't know if you caught them, but she, she responds with seven he has statements. Five of them are like, man, I need to remember this. I need to repeat this. I need to say this over and over. I probably put it on the bathroom mirror type thing. Two of them are kind of warnings. They're kind of like, oh, don't be this person. Don't be this person. I'll walk you through them. Let's look at them in case you didn't see them. Verse 48, he has looked. He has looked. She's saying he has looked at me, and for some reason, 
I don't know why, but he's considered me worthy of this. He's wanting to use me. He has looked. Next, he has done. He has done great things, she says. He has done great things. She's like, I don't understand fully yet. This is impossible. I don't know how this is going to happen. But when I look back over my 14 years, 15 years, man, he has done some great things. So I don't know why I would stop trusting him now because he's done great things. He's got an incredible track record. She, uh, she says he has, um, he has shown, he has shown strength with his arms. She's like, yes, it does seem impossible, but guess what? There are stories passed down from generation to generation, and in my own life, I have seen there be moments where God, it looked like it was not going to work out, it didn't look like it was possible, and your strength made it possible, and your strength can make anything possible. So she says he has shown his strength. Next, she does the two kind of warnings. She says, he has scattered the proud in their thoughts of their hearts. She's like, I don't want to get too proud. I don't want to get too, I, want to, I don't want to think I'm too important. I don't want to get to a place where I'm like, whoo, man, look at me. Humble estate from generation to generation. Yes, glad to meet you. You know, she's like, I don't want to be that person because that person, God scatters. And you know what? That person also God brought down. God brought down. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those a humble estate. She's like, if I stay where I'm at right now, I'm perfectly postured and positioned for God to use me fully. I don't want to change that because he's brought down those that change that. And then she says, he has filled. He has filled the hungry with good things. And the rich he sent away empty. So she's like, I don't want to feel like that there's nothing he could provide or there's nothing he could do because when I'm hungry, guess what? He fills me up. When I show up hungry, he's always got something for me. And when I show up thinking, man, I don't really, what is he going to teach me? I kind of figured I'm a big deal. People know me. You know, she's like, no, I need to stay hungry because when I'm hungry, that's when I'm filled. And then she says he has helped. He has helped his servant. He has helped his servant. And she's like, my posture needs to be one of here am I, here am I. Use me, send me. I know it sounds impossible, but I know he will show up. He will show up. He has. He has. He has looked. He has done. He has shown. He has filled. He has helped. He has looked. He has done. He has shown. He has filled. He has helped. He has looked, he has done, he has shown, he has filled, he has helped. Elizabeth's like, man, what do you think? And she responds, you know what? I'm good. He's looked, he's done, he's shown, he's helped. We're good. It's going to be great. Her circumstances hadn't changed at this point. She still didn't know how it was going to work out. Because remember, she made haste. So she took off as soon as she could to get to Elizabeth. As soon as she could. Her response to Gabriel was just as powerful and just as impactful. In Luke 138, after getting this news, it says, And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to to your word. Let it be to me. Let it be to me. What a powerful statement. What a picture of full surrender. We miss out on so much when this is not our posture and our position as followers of Christ. When it's not one of, I'm a servant of the Lord, let it be to me. I don't understand why this has happened this way or why this is going this way. I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. I don't expect I ever will. I'm confused. I don't get it. But let it be to me. Let it be to me. I'm a servant of the Lord. Let it be to me. Let it be to me. It's easy to think, man, I... I didn't sign up for this kind of Christian life. But we did. <laughs> we did. We did. 
Jesus came and took all our sin, all our shame, in exchange for all his love and all his grace. And what he asked from us is to surrender and trust him. Surrender and trust him. If we did sign up for that. And for us, it's easy because if you're like me, I want to define that as ease, as peace, as blessing, as heaven, not hell, comfort and joy, comfort and joy, oh, tidings of comfort and joy. That's how I want to define that. And yes, it is all those things, beautifully all those things. But it's also pure joy when we face trials of many kind, the Bible says. It's also all things working together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Can I clue you in? It wouldn't say all things if all didn't mean confusing, fearful, bad, troubling, worrisome. It would just say good things work together for the good. But it says all things work together for the good to those who love him and are called according to his purposes. It also says to pick up your cross and follow me. Now, when we really stop down for a moment and think about that, that's not where the cross ran your neck. Please do so. I'm not saying that's bad. But that's not what he's saying. He's saying pick up your execution device that was used to kill people. So he's giving us a heads up. This is not going to be easy. This is not going to be without some bumps in the road. This is not going to be without some moments where we go, I didn't sign up for this. It's also where it says continue to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. So yes, it is peace. It is joy. It is blessing. It is heaven. It is not hell. It is comfort and joy. But it's also those things. Where are you right now? Where are you right now in light of what we've talked about? Has God given you something clearly? Has he given a clear directive? Is there something that you know and think, man, I really think I should do it this way or I should do this or do that? But it's difficult and hard and unknown and scary and fearful and confusing and it doesn't seem like it, it seems impossible and it seems like it won't work and it seems like man yeah I think it's God but man if I were God I wouldn't do it this way why didn't he ask me have you at that moment said well, I didn't sign up for this I'm out I believe you're here today so that we can learn from Joseph and Mary, 14-year-old, 15-year-olds, that when faced with similar decisions, took a different path. Because we know life is going to bring us, I didn't sign up for this moment. They're gonna happen. They're gonna exist. And in those moments, I think Joseph and Mary have showed us that he has. He's looked. He's done. He's shown himself faithful. He's filled us when we needed filling. And he's helped. He has. He has. He has. He has. But more importantly for you and I today, he will. He will, he will look, he will do, he will show, he will fill, he will help. And let it be said of us when those moments come that our posture and position was one where we heard from God and we said, I'm a servant of the Lord. Let it be to me. Let it be. Let's pray. Let's pray.
as we move into a time of response. Maybe you just need to go to the cross today and write, let it be to me. Maybe there's something specific that I don't know, so it's not me convicting you. It's it's the Holy Spirit. And maybe there's a specific moment where you've said, no, I'm out. I just signed out for this. And maybe you need to, as a way of repentance, a way of turning from that and turning to God, go nail that to the cross. Maybe you need to light a candle just as a symbolic gesture that when these moments show up, you're ready to say, let it be to me. And as you take communion, man, revel in the fact of how good our God is. That he looks, that he does, that he shows, that he fills, that he helps. And there's some Elizabeths that will be standing around the side. If you need to borrow nourishment from other believers, there's some people. Our prayer team will be there ready to talk, ready to speak with you. But you respond as you need to. What did God say to you? What are you going to do about that? God, we love you. Thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for Joseph and Mary and their example. I pray that we follow it boldly.